Hi, I'm Megan. Thanks for joining me for another episode of Friday Sews. It's Friday again. It was a great week here. Um, I'm in a great mood today and I wanted to share just a couple projects that I've been working on um, and some fabric that I got and some plans I have for the week ahead. So I have been working on some shorts. As I mentioned in a previous Friday Sews video, um, none of the shorts that I currently own fit me. I couldn't find the pair that did fit. I, I have no idea what happened to it. I probably, um, I probably donated them in a fit of cleaning rage. But anyway, I um, was trying to decide whether I should just go buy some shorts or if I should make them myself. And I did both. So I did go out. Um, and I bought a couple pairs of just pull-on linen shorts, and um, I also made a test pair. So um, I made the Allegro shorts from Love Notions. So I did my test pair in flannel, which is what I had lying around, and I thought, if all else fails, they'll be pajama shorts. And so I made the five-inch inseam version. Now, based on the measurement chart, um, I cut a size 24, but I needed to cut to a size 26 for my thigh. The instructions suggested that it, well, actually they didn't suggest, they didn't say anything about grading down to the waist, but I knew that I would have to be able to pull these shorts over my hip. So grading down two sizes for the waist was maybe not, I didn't know how it would go. So it, they are elastic waist shorts. Um, so I just cut my hip measurement for the waist and hip, and then based on some instructions, I graded to a 26 to the thigh. So there's a part of the crotch, like the inseam that you adjust out. Um, and then I decided to make them reasonably simple. So I did do the front pockets. I didn't do the patch pockets on the back. I did do the faux fly extension, but I didn't do the cuff on the short. Essentially, I just wanted to see like how these shorts were gonna fit before I tried to make them in either like a lightweight, I think they'd be great in like a tensile denim, super lightweight denim, a lightweight linen, maybe um, like a tensile twill, like that drapey lightweight fabric. Um, so anyway, so I made the test muslin of the shorts and they, they fit weird. <laughs> so um, the nature of like elastic weight shorts, I knew they're elastic all the way around. So I knew that there would be some bunching of fabric around sort of like the lower tummy and the backside and and I that was fine with me um, but they had a ton of extra fabric in the front so sort of like between the belly and the crotch inseam like handfuls of extra fabric and so I'll put in some super unflattering photos I took in my very dirty bathroom mirror so you can see what I mean. So I spent about a day and a half watching the shorts fitting or the pants fitting videos that Karina has done, which are great. And she uses the Allegro pattern as one of the examples for that video. So worth a watch if you're interested in that pattern. Um, and I had a hint of an inkling that I might need to adjust the crotch curve and the front inseam based on the vertical wrinkles that I was getting, but I wasn't getting like the typical camel toe wrinkle. It seemed like more than that. So I thought, are the right are they the right size? Is it the fact that I just um, I I have compared to my hip measurements, and I think for a lot of blocks, my tummy or my belly is reasonably flat. Like I don't, it, 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 there's I've had two kids, so there's something there, but um, I don't carry a lot of additional weight in my tummy. It's all in my hips and my thighs and my backside. So I was like, well, maybe the front there's just too much fabric and. Anyway, I posted a photo on the Love Notions Facebook page and I did get confirmation from a few other um, sewists that yeah, I should probably scoop out the front crotch curve. Um, a couple other things that I could try too. I wasn't too focused on the back, like the back fit isn't perfect either, but I just wanted to deal with like the, the excess of fabric in the front that was not only not flattering, but like quite not uncomfortable, like they're fine, they're, but they've just felt really sloppy. So, um, and then I decided that I would compare just the Allegro pattern with another elastic waist pajama pants pattern that I've made recently that I felt like didn't have that sort of bunching effect on it, which was the pine cone, sorry, the pine cove pajamas from itch to stitch. So with that one, I made the pants, um, the hip measurement wasn't big enough for my hips, but I figured based on the amount of ease, it was about an inch too small compared to what I measured at, but I figured, you know what, I'll go for it. And I, I really like the fit of those pajama pants and they don't have extra, they have a nice flat front on me. So I did compare the two pattern pieces and figured, yeah, I could probably scoop out the front crotch a bit. 
the back crotch, like, I don't, I even, I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm reasonably happy with the end result. So that did seem to solve some of the problem. So I scooped out the front curve of the crotch by um, a quarter of an inch. And then I put them on and I thought like it was, I was surprised by how much of an improvement that small adjustment made. So then I decided that some someone else had suggested that I take the, the front inseam of the shorts in, um, sort of from crotch curve up to waistband. And I thought, you know what? I might as well try that. So I took that seam in by a quarter inch and that made a big difference too. So I think those two adjustments, that's what I'll transfer over to my paper pattern for the next one that I make. But I think if I have time this weekend, I'm going to make another muslin and I'm going to cut a straight size 24 instead of grading up to a 26. And I'm going to see how that does. And I might, I might go straight size 24 and I might grade the waist in to a 22 to see what that does to you. So I'll do one of the, the pattern that I've already cut and the size I've cut with the adjustments I've made. And then I'll trace off another fresh one in a smaller size to see if maybe that's just the more straightforward solution is that I just picked a size that has two, more ease than I want. So um, yeah, so I'll let you know how that goes. But for now, I do have a pair of pant, of shorts, pajama shorts that I can wear um, and they're comfortable. I also bought the Closet Core Pietra shorts and pants pattern. So it's got a flat front and elastic back, but sewing those shorts really sparked that like love of sewing. Like I finished um, hemming my pajama shorts and I just had that like overwhelming urge to sew something. And I wanted to sew, like I wanted to cut out another pair of shorts right away, but I cannot for the life of me, find the linen that I had set aside. It's like leftover pink linen from the Ava dress that I made. I cannot find it. There's not that many places in my apartment to hide fabric or stash it. So I have no idea where it's gone. And it was like a sizable remnant piece, like a good, you know, chunk off the side and then probably like a meter on the bottom of full width of fabric. So it's around here somewhere. I'll find it. It's maybe it's in the linen closet. That would make sense if I put the linen in the linen closet, but that's where I keep all the towels. So I'll, I'll find it eventually. And I'll, I'll, I think I'm going to try to make those pantry shorts out of it. Um, the other thing I did this week was I bought some muslin. So I bought straight up muslin fabric from Rick Rack, um, which is a fabric store in Calgary. They do also have an online presence. So I'll make sure to put the link to their store um, in the description box, but I bought wide width, muslin, just straight up like calico. And that is because um, my mind, I'm gonna play some tricks on it, right? So even when I use like scrap fabric to make a twall and I tell myself this is a muslin or this is a twall and this is just to test the fit. This is a pair of flannel shorts, it's just to test the fit. If they don't fit, there is some disappointment like that I experience and I'm like, why don't they fit? Like I measured myself properly, why don't they fit? And I just want to, like, I want to dispose of that. And I think that buying the muslin is saying to myself, that first test of the pattern is a test. You just need to figure out what to do before you even go on and make a wearable muslin after that. Like, it's just a test. This is just part of the process. So this is pattern prep. Um, and I think that I do want to make some pants. Like, as I've, you know, expanded my skills and I look at the clothes in my wardrobe, like, some really well-fitting pants would go a long way in making me feel pretty great. So um, yeah, I, I this is what I'm gonna try. I'll let you know if my little Jedi mind trick that I'm playing on myself is effective or not. Um, I, I firmly believe that if, if it was possible, I would be able to tickle myself. Like I can trick myself into doing a lot of things. Um, and so I often manipulate my own brain into doing the things that I want to do. I also often manipulate my own brain into doing the things I don't want to do. And you can guess which side of that coin I most often fall on. So anyway, as I mentioned, sewing up those Allegro's, I just had that like overwhelming urge to sew like that. I just I want to sit in the machine. I was so inspired. So I had been at the fabric store with my friend Robin uh, two weekends ago, 10 days ago, at some point like that. And I picked up this like polyester, <laughs> It was like $4 a meter or $6 a meter. I bought two meters of it. 
it's kind of just like a little bit sheer. Um, it just, it called my name and I thought, you know what, whatever, I'll, I'll take it home. Um, and I thought, well, I'll turn it into like a cami or a something. Um, and so I cut it out and I cut a Love Notions Harmony tank top. So that's their woven blouse. It's got darts, really simple. I cut the sleeveless version. So it's got a bit of a swing shape. Um, it, uh, it has a round neck, just sleeveless. The neckline and the armholes are finished with bias. Um, this, this does not hold a press like at all. And I've sewn with this type of fabric from Fabricland before. And even if you drench it in starch, it doesn't hold a press. So making bias tape is just not, I feel like that's a poor life choice. So I'm going to use some black ready-made bias tape I have, um, and it's single fold, so you won't see it. So, um, so that's fine. So I'm almost done that project. And it just, it was one of those days where I sat down the machine, my serger was threaded with the right color and my sewing machine had the right needle and the right color in it. And I just like, I didn't have to adjust the tension on anything. I just, I had like 25 minutes to sew and I got almost the whole tank top done. Like all I have to do is the bias binding. And it just felt fantastic. So I am sending you all my best sewing mojo if you're not feeling that way. Um, because as we know, like it's a fickle mistress, so it comes and goes but um, I'm feeling quite fired up, which is also good news. So in my personal life, we, um, we have sold my mother-in-law's home. So my husband is an only child and his um, father lives in a different country and his parents aren't together. So his father lives in Germany and my mother-in-law lives in British Columbia. And um, she's had to move into long-term care. And so we needed to sell her house and that's the home my husband grew up in. And so if you've done that, um, you know, it's really, it's really hard. It's really hard even when it's, a good downsizing move. It's hard to say goodbye to your childhood home. Uh, it's hard to stand in that house and know you'll never come back. Um, and if you've done that before, you know what I mean. And if you haven't done it before, like you will at some point know what I mean. Um, so anyway, we sold the house and uh, my husband is going to go out to BC uh, next week. So he's leaving tomorrow. He's going to be gone for a week to sort of pack up what remains and then we have a month until the sale closes like it's until possession exchanges so in July we will probably take the kids out to go like do the final wrap up so we have to move all the furniture and we have to pack up all of the kitchen stuff and the dishes and we've done a lot of it but not all of it so the sentimental stuff has been dealt with now it's just the like nuts and bolts of stuff that's in a house so and when you've lived in the same house for 50 years nearly um, that's a lot of stuff. So anyway, Gary's going out by himself. I'm staying at home here in Calgary with the two kiddos and, um, we are going to have a good time, right? We're going to have a good time. So my kids are still in school. School doesn't end until the end of June here in Calgary. Um, the little one's still going to daycare. My older daughter's still going to school, hopefully. Um, and we are, it's supposed to be hot. So we're going to spend a lot of our time having picnics in the park. And I'm going to try to run those kids up and down hills after school until they are ready to go to sleep. And then when they're asleep, it's just going to be time for me. So if my plan goes well, uh, I will have my evenings free to sew. And if my plan doesn't go well, then I will have my evenings to sit on the couch and watch TV and recover from the day. But anyway, I'll still be at work. Um, and, you know, it's busy. It, for sure, it will be busy, but it also there's a part of me that's excited to just have like a week's worth of evening time where um, it's just me that I need to consider. So my husband and I like to do things together in the evening. We like to sit together and watch a show or talk or, you know, play a game or something. Um, so it, it will be nice to have some time that's just for me. And I think I have a couple sewing projects planned. So I'm going to try out some shorts, going to finish that harmony top. Um, I also would like to make a, I have some black linen and I'd like to make another lyric um, blouse, but I'm going to do the dress version this time. So black linen with like a tortoiseshell button down the front, gathered skirt. I think it's going to be really cute. And like we've opened up a little bit here in Alberta, so we can in theory go sit on a patio. And we did last week, my family, my household of four, we went and sat on the patio, the Mexican restaurant across the street. And I wore my um, every day's a weekend dress and it was excellent. It was a good time. So anyway, I'm feeling hopeful. 
I hope that you're feeling hopeful. Let me know what's going on in your world. If you're not feeling hopeful, you know, share that too. Um, it's not all roses all the time, as you know, but right now I'm really happy to be able to look uh, ahead and see some sunlight. So um, I'd love to know what you're up to and I will see you again soon.